Hey everybody, Ryan from Rhino Hockey Channel here. Alright, going to be going over the first round matchup between New York Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins. The New York Rangers are the home ice team in this matchup. Alright, if you have not done so already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little tiny notification bell next to it, so you can be notified when I drop a new video. Sorry. <coughs> Dang allergies. And also let me know in the comments what you think, if you agree, disagree with my prediction at the end of the video. And also, let me know what you what your opinion is on the whole prediction. Let me know your prediction and let me know your reason behind it. I want to know. It's interesting stuff. Alright, let's get started. Rangers went 3-1 and one in this matchup this year. And Pittsburgh went 1-3. and three. On the 26th of February, Pittsburgh won one nothing in their first matchup. On the 25th of March... The Rangers won 5-1. to one. Then on the 29th of March, Rangers won 3-2. Then, I wrote that incorrectly. <laughs> I was supposed to be 420. So on April 20th, 2022, the Rangers won 3 to nothing. <coughs> Gosh dang. Stupid allergies. In the head-to-head -head matchup this year, Chris Kreider was the top scorer for the New York Rangers with 3 goals, 3 assists for 6 points. Mika Zamanjad also has six points, all in assists. Artemi Panarin, a goal and three assists for four points. Frank Vetrano, I believe he played only maybe two or three of those games. Uh, he had three goals for three points in those two, in those two three games he played. And Andrew Kopp, after the trade for him as well from Winnipeg, goal two assists for three points. Shesterkin, this kid's a beast. He's going to be a hell of a goaltender if he keeps playing the way he does. 3-1 and one was his record. Sidney Crosby was the top scorer for Pittsburgh with two points. A goal and an assist. Chris Letang, two assists for two points. Malkin, two points and a goal and assist. Then you have Rust, Kapanen, Heinen, Carter, Dumoulin, and Boyle all with a point each. Obviously, Pittsburgh did not score much. And Jerry, 1-3 in this matchup. Let's see. Pittsburgh scored four goals. I see two of them there just from Crosby and Malkin. On the scoring side for the, the this is the entire season, Artemi Panarin, 22 goals, 74 assists for 96 points. Not a great season. <coughs> Sorry. Mika Zibanejad, 29 goals, 52 assists for 81 points. Chris Kreider, 52 goals for him this year. Great year. 25 assists for 77 points. Adam Fox, 11 goals, 63 assists for 74 points. And Ryan Strom, the soon-to-be UFA, 21 goals, 33 assists for 54 points. On the Pittsburgh side, Sidney Crosby, 31 goals, 53 assists for 84 points. Jake Gensel, 40 goals, 44 assists for 84 points. Chris Letang, 10 goals, 58 assists for 68 points. Brian Rust, 24 goals, 34 assists for 58 points. And Jeff Carter, 19 goals, 26 assists for 45 points. Now, you're probably looking at that and saying, wait a minute, where is Mr. Malkin? Well, he was injured a lot this year, so he's not in their top five in scoring this year. And he's also, if I remember correctly, UFA after this year. Was that? Was he UFA this year? I think he is, I want to say. I could be wrong, though. On the goaltending side, you have Shesterkin for the New York Rangers. Top goalie, obviously. Probably one of the top five goalies in the world right now. Shesterkin, 36, 13, and 4. 2.07 goals against average and 9.35 save percentage. I think that is probably some of the best goalie numbers for goalies that have played more than 10 games. Georgiev, 15, 10, and 2. 2.92 goals against average and 8.98 save percentage. Those numbers may be hurting his trade, trade return a little bit. Kincaid, 1-0-0, two, goal, two goals against average, and a 9.35 save percentage. Not too bad in his one or two games that he played. Huska, 0-1-0, 7.04 goals against average. Oh. 8.21 save percentage. I don't think you're seeing Huska. Huska in the playoffs unless there's some serious injury issues. And then you had Jerry on the Pittsburgh side, 34-18-6, 2.42 goals against average, and 9.19 save percentage. DeSmith, 11-6-5, 2.79 goals against average, and a 9-14 save percentage. Louis Deming still plays in the NHL from time to time. 
101, 2.02 goals against average and 952 save percentage. So, obviously, I think you're going to see Shesterkin versus Jerry. Then, on the injury side for the Rangers, this one could hurt because Andrew Cobb played pretty dang well for them when he came over from Winnipeg. He's day-to-day -day with lower body injury, another potentially big one. Artem Panarin, day-to-day -day with an upper body injury. Those two don't play, that's a huge difference maker right there. Tyler Mott, out until at least May 2nd. We, I've gone over that in previous videos. Make sure to check the previous ones out and you'll know what I'm talking about. He is out until he's May 2nd with upper body injury. And Sammy Blay, unfortunately, injured early in the season. Out for the entire playoffs. You're not going to see Sammy Blay for this team, unfortunately. September 15th is his estimated return date. And that has a knee injury. So, that's unfortunate. Would have been nice to have his playoff experience for his young team. On the injury side, Tristan Jerry for Pittsburgh is out until at least May 2nd with a foot injury. Nathan Boyu out until at least May 2nd with lower body injury. Brian Dumoulin, day-to-day -day with an undisclosed injury. And Jason Zucker, day-to-day -day with a lower body injury. Zucker has not worked out as well as they had hoped, I think. And Tristan Jerry is the only one there that may be a huge issue if he cannot play. Well, no, he is definitely the only issue if he cannot play. Because Dumoulin, okay. Nathan Boyu, trade deadline acquisition, so eh, I think we'll survive. Tristan Jerry, though, doesn't play. Casey DeSmith, uh, he's not terrible by any stretch of imagination, but I don't think he can beat Shesterkin. I don't think he could. Jerry, I'm not even sure he can, but we'll get to that in predictions. Last playoff appearances, New York Rangers lost to Carolina three in three games in that play-in round from 2020. So they didn't make the playoffs last year. I predict them to be one of the top teams last year, of course. Pie in my face. Pittsburgh lost to the New York Islanders last year in the first round of the playoffs in six games. Four games of two. In other words. Dark horse for the New York Rangers. The rookies. They have a lot of young kids on this team, so the way they play is going to be the difference maker, really. Lafreniere and Kako, you definitely need them to play... Bigger minutes than they are now. I mean, they, they play big minutes now. Don't get me wrong. But they need to play those minutes and more. They need to take a jump in that... Uh, in that development. They really do. Because playoffs, different game than regular season. As we all know. Then on the Pittsburgh side, Ricard Raquel. They picked him up for Anaheim. And you know what? They need that secondary scoring from him. Because obviously, this team had a hard time scoring against the Rangers this year. So they need him to be that secondary scoring guy, I think, in this series. And if he can accomplish that, they're going to be a far deadlier team because of it. So, those are my predictions for who the Dark Horses will be. Now to the prediction of how this series will go. I see the Rangers winning this one in six. Why? Well... Because I see the Rangers having a much deeper offense, honestly, a stronger defense, and goaltending, Shusterkin, you're not going to find many goaltenders better than him. But the one advantage Pittsburgh has is experience. They have a very deep veteran team. You got Crosby, Malkin, three Stanley Cups between them, or three each. Ricard Raquel, not one of Stanley Cup, but still has been through a lot of wars in his time with Anaheim. Yeah, Jeff Carter. Two Stanley Cup victories right there, too. I mean, you can go on. I mean, Gensel won a couple of Stanley Cups as well with his team. You have some guys left over from those two straight Stanley Cups they won. So, you got the experience. You got the playoff experience, especially. So, Pittsburgh could pull one off here. I'm not discrediting that. But just looking at the matchup between the two, are the Pittsburgh guys... Be on their prime now. Are they definitely guys who can still play, but can't get over that hump when it comes to playoffs anymore? This may be their last shot, so who knows? Maybe they pull this one off. I can see that with the experience factor. I mean, look at Dallas when they made the finals a couple of years ago. It was because of how experienced that team was. It wasn't because they were better than all the teams they beat. It was because they were better in the experience area. They knew what the heck they were doing. They knew how to win in the playoffs. They knew that wasn't this 
new age hockey player thing of yeah, play cleaner. Oh, look at that. I fell down. Oh my god, he almost touched me. Let me get a penalty. It's not like that in the playoffs. That sort of stuff doesn't necessarily work because not a whole lot of penalties called. There's not a whole lot of this whole oh, referee, help me. He he, he looked at me funny. It, it doesn't fly in the playoffs. You, you don't get away with that stuff anymore. So, we'll see how this plays out, but I still am thinking the Rangers in six, just because they are a very deep team, and they, they have experience too. It's not like they don't have any experience on that team. They do have some. So, we'll see how it plays out, but just going off of what I see, Rangers in six. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you agree or disagree with my prediction, that's fine. Just be civil. And if you have a different opinion, let me know. Let me see what your prediction is and what your reasoning is. Let me see. All right. I will see you on the next video. Bye, everybody.